Good afternoon. Welcome to the webinar, uh, the SAP Sideways Roadmap uh, 2018. Um, today we do have a full house and we have a packed program for the next hour. Uh, this webinar is presented by SAP and by Dauber Consulting. Uh, I want to go through an uh, agenda real quick. Um, our presenter today is uh, Tony Antonello. He's the VPA for the HANA Global Excellence Center of Excellence at SAP. Uh, he will walk us through uh, what what happened, what will happen, and uh, what <clears throat> what's the future of uh, the Sybase portfolio inside the SAP portfolio. Uh, quick introduction myself. My name is Peter Dobler. I'm the founder and CEO of Dobler Consulting. Uh, and as the uh, for the agenda, housekeeping, uh, I will walk you through how the system works, how we run the, the webinar, and and uh, a couple other things. Give you a quick, uh, quick uh, uh, advertising blurb uh, about Dauber Consulting, and then off we go with uh, Tony's presentation. And at the end, we have about ten minutes for Q and A, uh, give or take. Uh, and I will explain in the housekeeping how this all works. Okay. Everybody's in listen-only mo mode, so you cannot uh, unmute and talk to us. That doesn't work this way. Uh, if you have a question, if you want to uh, gain attention, there is a raise hand uh, option in, in the... Uh, <clears throat> I think it's the uh, the panel that you have in there, uh, and then I, I can, while Tony is speaking, I can take care of your questions. Um, the session will be recorded and will be available uh, immediately after the uh, webinar. You will get an email with the download instruction. The presentation itself, a PDF of that, will be made available as well. Uh, uh, any question you have, there is a question panel. You type your question in there, and we will uh, take the question at the end uh, for Q&A session. Uh, we will not answer any question through the presentation, just to keep the flow going. So if you have a question, put it in there, and we will take them in the order that they came in to answer them. Um, quick uh, rundown on Dauber Consulting. Uh, we are in the... Uh, database service business, we are providing services for uh, uh, SAP Cybers clients, um, we're ranging from small business all the way up to Fortune 500 companies, and we are across multiple industry verticals. Um, we are a original Sybase partner that got uh, transferred into the SAP ecosystem back in 2010, and now we are now eight years with SAP, still supporting Cybase, still supporting the uh, uh, previous Cybase portfolio, but also expanding into the HANA platform. Uh, HANA is the most important uh, strategic uh, orientation of SAP, and you will see this in the presentation from Tony. Uh, but what we do is we help our clients to uh, upgrade or migrate their databases from uh, previous versions to the latest ASC 16 which is the latest uh, uh, implementation. We've done hundreds of those migrations, and we see massive performance gains. So uh, please give us a call. Go to our website. Send me an email. If you have questions about upgrading to ASC 16, to whatever SP level you want to go to, <clears throat> you can go to the latest one. Uh, give us a call. We've done uh, literally hundreds of them, so we can definitely help you there. So having said that, without further ado, uh, I will be handing over to Tony. Uh, we will be off in just a second. Tony, it's all yours. Can you see this? Absolutely. Sorry about that. Well, thank you, uh, and good afternoon or good morning, depending on, on where you are in the world. Uh, my name is Tony Antonello, and just a uh, 30-second bio. Uh, I started with uh, Sybase in May of 1990, um, and I started as a pre-sales engineer, and since that time, uh, I've essentially worked uh, in, in all corners of the world supporting strategic Sybase customers. And uh, a good part of my role today still is the management of strategic Sybase customers, and I get to do 
these roadmap sessions, uh, usually to um, you know one on one with the customer. But I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to pay today to talk to all of you. Um, the standard disclaimer slide that you see here is only because I'm showing roadmap information. And as you know, uh, if I start looking into 2019 and 2020, um, there is an opportunity for what we say is going to happen uh, to get delayed or, or, or you know, change your mind. Uh, so that's the, the purpose of the disclaimer. Um, I, I really would like today's presentation to go uh, on schedule and uh, uh, to that end I've tried to, tried to time uh, my talk out a little bit and chunk it out but you can see that I, I do want to talk about a, a, a few things I want to give you an, a little bit of an insight into what SAP has done with Sybase since they acquired it uh, talk a little bit about where our focus is talk about ASC and extreme online transaction processing and, and the mem scale option which is really integral to the future of of ASC. I want to talk a little bit about data center operations, some uh, enhancements uh, you probably have heard of always on. Uh, if you haven't, it's, uh, it's essentially uh, a, a virtual cluster. Uh, talk about some of the security work that we've done. I want to talk about workload analyzer. I want to talk about a big push that we have for ASC in the cloud and subscriptions and maybe doing aspects of your business in the cloud with ASC. And I, I want to talk as as Peter mentioned, HANA is a, is a, is a core technology for, HANA, uh, for SAP, and there is a really tight integration between ASD and HANA, and it gets tighter with every release. I want to talk about that. And then I want to give you a little bit of insight as to what's coming, uh, what's coming in the short term and what's coming in the medium term. And if I'm lucky, I can do all of that in under 15 minutes. So just from the perspective of, you know, what's the role, what's the vision of, of ASC within the SAP portfolio, uh, it really is intended to target extreme OLTP. So in, in terms of disk-based databases, OLTP, there is not a better OLTP engine in the marketplace today. And uh, I can show you some numbers that, uh, that will back that claim up. Um, and our, our focus is going to be not only with custom applications, which of course is our legacy, uh, but also for SAP Business Suite applications. Um, where we've spent a lot of money and a lot of effort over the last couple of years is, is on our XOLTP functionality, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, we've also, you may know that ASC 15.7 was the first database um, available from Sybase that actually supported Business Suite. And we've gone from zero to just about 12,000 uh, customers in, in uh, five years. So that's a pretty, pretty impressive number. And that's good, you know, whether you're a business suite customer or not, whether you're a custom uh, building your own applications on ASC, that is a really good number for you because guess what? They pay maintenance too. And that maintenance dollar goes towards uh, continuing the evolution and enhancement of, of the ASC database. So that's a good thing. Um, we really are keen to get more of this offering to the cloud, you know, backing up to the cloud, replicating to the cloud, doing workload analyzer in the cloud, on-prem, off-prem. That's where everybody is going, and, and we, too, need to follow suit. And uh, we've done a lot of work in that space, and we'll talk about that. Um, and where we're moving forward is cloud enablement. Uh, again, more features around performance. Uh, there are some things we still want to do. And continuing the uh, evolution of the product for Business Suite. So, you know, as, as I mentioned, um, it, it's, it's, been a, it's, it's been a good marriage with, uh, with SAP. We now have more than 11,000 Business Suite applications installed on ASD. Uh, we've got more than 3,700 ASC systems that are deployed in the SAP HANA Enterprise Cloud. And, and I'm happy to say that in the last year, uh, we've migrated over 400 Oracle installs to ASD. So that, uh, that's a good number. Um, in terms of performance, the way performance is measured with Business Suite is with uh, an SD benchmark that's a supply and distribution benchmark and uh, we are leading uh, SAP ASE is leading has the best four processor results actually I'll start from the bottom the best two processor results 
on a Dell PowerEdge with 32,000 users, and the best four processor result on a Dell PowerEdge with 62,000 users. What I want you to kind of look at is the linearity of those numbers from 32,000 to 64,000, uh, from a two to a four. We've also done an eight, and we're having those results uh, assessed, so stand by, but very linear. And when you start talking eight CPUs with 24 cores, it really is a testament to the scalability. So stand by for some of those numbers. With respect to how we go to market with ASC, uh, we've changed uh, in a big way since the acquisition. Uh, so we, we kind of segment our offerings into strategic enterprise, big enterprise, medium, small, and developer. And if you think about our strategic enterprise offering, the, the platform edition, it, it's really a bundling of ASC, IQ, and replication server, and all of their options, except for the options you see on the bottom of the screen, MemScale, Workload Analyzer, and all is on. But all of those options are bundled into a single SKU, complete with all of the dev and test and QA and, and, uh, and all of the soft rights around virtualization and ha having the ability to move from platform to platform. All of that is bundled into a single SKU. And it's, it really is designed for, for large enterprises but it just makes license management very simple. It gives you, uh, it's really our strategy around the modernization of the data center. And as you look to virtualize containers and you look to move workloads and you look to change the balance of databases to IQs, to replication servers, you can do all of that in the fly on your own without having to call your vendor to talk about it. So, so that's what Platform Edition really is about. And then, of course, we have our, our Enterprise Edition, which is our core offering, ASD Enterprise Edition for large enterprises. We then have an, an Edge Edition, which is um, a, a, a solution that's designed for uh, applications that are less than eight cores. Uh, we then have our Express Edition, and this is a free to use, full use license for development and deployment. So I'll say that again free development and deployment, 50 gig. Uh, database size and and four engines. So you could hopefully look at this as a as a great alternative to some of those open source technologies uh, that you may be uh, orienting toward. We also have uh, an evaluation license, and and this is a full use all options, even the ones listed below: mem scale, workload analyzer, and always on. And it allows you to take advantage of these options for a period of uh, ninety days. Now, having said that, if I kind of um, don't switch the screen here, it's 90 days. However, uh, you know we can be convinced that you need it for a year. So that's simply a, a phone call away. We, we've also really loosened the reins on on, on how ag aggressively we uh, we wish to tip the apple cart of customers who are are using products. So what I mean by that. Is, is we would call it user-friendly licensing to avoid business disruption. So if for some reason you need to move to a, a machine with more cores than you're licensed for, you know what? It will allow you to do that. AC will allow you to do, to do that. It will nag you, but it's not going to suspend your business uh, in, in order to prevent you from, from doing so. It will just tell you, hey, you're not properly licensed. You should probably call somebody. Um, but anyways, that's just a very, it's kind of a, a change in disposition um, since the acquisition by SAP to be a little more uh, customer friendly than I, I'd say we, we were in prior years. <clears throat> so, you know, where we're looking at focusing our engineering ex uh, expertise, we're, we're again certainly looking at OLTP performance, kind of surpassing that four terabyte limit that you see today. And uh, we want to get to 64,000 connections, 64,000 concurrent connections in, in a server. Uh, in memory only tables, a lot of work we're doing there, non-blocking uh, read only tables and partitions. And then with respect to data center operations, we're going to make a lot of enhancements, a lot of uh, changes to always on. So today it's a two node cluster. Um, in business suite, it will become a three node cluster. That is for one for HA, one for DR. We also want to have that same ability 
at three node HADR cluster uh, available for custom application uh, as well. Uh, we're introducing data masking. So you, you want to move data into the cloud or you want to do some development in the cloud or some perhaps that's even um, workload analysis in the cloud, then the data that you send to the cloud can be obfuscated. Uh, temporal SQL to give you, you know, time series kind of look back into what the data was before you make changes. Uh, changes to the MDA tables. How many knew that MDA tables were, some of them were only 64-bit, they will all become 64-bit uh, MDA tables. Uh, I, again, some work in the cloud. Uh, we're looking at a subscription-based service for workload analyzer. Um, the idea is, you know, if you've got a 64 core machine in production, it might be very difficult for you to uh, create a comparable machine in dev test to play back that workload. Uh, but you could take that workload, that PCAP file, and load it into a, a subscription-based 64 core machine in the cloud to use the workload analyzer. So that's something that we're working on. And then, as I said earlier on, we're really trying to get the HANA ASE relationship as tight as, as possible. And, and we've done some things like we've included SQL script in ASE, and we'll talk about that. And we've really enhanced component integration services so that it can very effectively push Transact SQL into HANA for execution, and we'll talk about that. And we've, uh, we've now got a, a capability where ASC will one, uh, run as a worker node in a HANA cluster and, and be completely consumed by all of the HANA tooling. And, and we can talk a little bit about that as well. That just gives you a, a flavor for where the short term 2018 and 2019 engineering focus areas are. With respect to, to what's happened since the acquisition, uh, the, the first release that came out of SAP uh, since the acquisition was ASC 15.7. And 15.7 really was the inaugural release for Business Suite, right? So prior to 15.7, ASC was the only mainstream database that didn't support SAP. And in my humble opinion, and that was really, uh, really one of the um, roadblocks that prevented ASC from having the kind of growth that it really deserved. It really was not able to take advantage of the Y2K explosion where Oracle licenses took off and Oracle became the number one database underneath SAP because Sybase didn't support it. And uh, shame on us, but uh, we, we now support, uh, as I said, with almost 12,000 installs, uh, Business Suite. This also introduced the threaded kernel, right? And, and uh, it was also the, um, the evolution of a lot of the very large database support that was needed for the, the, uh, the SQL to it, which was ASC 16. And then in 2014, we did release ASC 16, and it released, it, its focus was really scaled up on, on large SMP class machines. You may know, many of you probably have experienced uh, ASC would would invariably hit a wall somewhere between 30 and 36 cores uh, with, with AF, ASC 15.7. We really solved that problem with, with ASC 16, and, and we can demonstrate pretty linear scale up um, with, with 16.0. Uh, we introduced some features around partition level locking, index compression, full database encryption, uh, multi trigger support, residual data removal. Uh, it was a very complete release. And then in 15, we introduced first of our XOLTP releases, ASC 16 SP02. Uh, we also released uh, our HA and DR based synchronous replication, all was on, and we introduced the workload analyzer. And then last year, we introduced ASC 16 SP03, which is a continuation of our extreme OLTP release. And uh, it, re it introduced uh, some new features around uh, OLTP called uh, you know, our in-memory row store and multi-version concurrency control that we'll talk a little bit about in just a second. Um, but it also it began was the beginning of this drive of getting these products closer together. So it introduced, it introduced support for the HANA tooling. It also introduced support for a HANA schema. And it also introduced support for SQL script. So now you can develop 
HANA-like application in HANA or in ASD, and you can move the HANA-like applications from HANA to ASD, or you can move the HANA-like applications from ASD into HANA. And if you if you couple that with what we'll talk about, you know, with with accelerator for ASD, with this ability to push transact SQL into HANA, and for HANA to run in an in a uh, sorry, for ASC to run in a, in a HANA worker node, you can see that these products are beginning to get very close together. So let's talk a little bit uh, about, about Memscale. So, you know, what is Memscale? Memscale is a feature, it's actually an option to ASC, um, and it's designed to get to the next level of extreme online transaction processing. And, and it introduces in-memory computing with our, our in-memory row store. It introduces intelligent data placement. That's the ability to tier data in uh, everywhere from in-memory, through data caches, through solid state data caches, through fast disk, through slow disk, based on rules and an information lifecycle management paradigm that you put together in AAC. Um, atomic instructions, and, and this is something that we learned from our colleague uh, at HANA who worked very closely with Intel, where the, the chip manufacturers have, have put a lot of atomic instructions on the CPU uh, and inside the compilers, the software providers inside the compilers that um, take advantage of the closeness of, of, of uh, NUMA memory and, and allow you to use atomic level instructions as opposed to using hard uh, mutexes and spin locks. And, and that was a, a big boon to performance. And uh, we also took advantage of a lot of hardware and software innovations. Case in point would be the ability to take uh, a solid state device and plug it into a PCI port in, um, in your server and extend our buffers, our, our buffer cache to the solid state device, which is a heck of a lot faster than a spinning disk. And the whole premise behind Memscale is that it's designed to significantly increase transaction throughput and concurrency. So that, you know, that, that's what Memscale is about. Essentially nine features spread across three, uh, two releases, right? SP, SP2 and SP3, uh, consisting of Compiled queries or, or SNAP, Simple Native Access Protocol. Uh, this is available only on Linux. And, and the idea is that SNAP shortens the code execution path um, for uh, procedures and cache SQL and, and prepared statements. So it's similar to a just-in-time compiler. Uh, it's going to produce machine code from your uh, compiled procedures uh, as opposed to interpreted code. The idea here is to get very quick execution. We also introduced the ideas uh, of a latch-free B-tree. So the latch-free B-tree does away with index latches completely, right? So uh, index page modifications are done in memory, in tables, and it uses a delta merge process that, guess what, we learned from our HANA colleague. Uh, and it also uses CPU uh, level instructions and, and eliminating these latches for writes minimizes latch contention and uh, gives you faster uh, uh, searches for, for these frequently accessed pages. So by the way, this works uh, in memory uh, and on regular tables on, on, on spinning disk. But you need to enable it, right? You need to enable it, be, uh, create an alter database with latch-free index turned on or off in order to take advantage of that feature. Uh, the lock lock lockless buffer manager minimizes cache contention when concurrent users are trying to access the same page, right? So an example would be at, at the end of day, uh, at, you know, 430 when the market closes, everybody wants the same symbol. Everybody wants to get that SAP or that, you know, that stock of your choice symbol and you've got multiple threads now can access the cache without taking a lock. And this decreases cache contention and increases concurrency and throughput and performance. If we look at transactional memory, this you know hardware-based locking or, or uh, optimistic locking takes advantage of new chip-based atomic instructions, as well as the new compilers, and, and allows memory values such as keep counts to be modified without having to take a spin lock in order to make a change to a spin lock. Right. So the idea here is I get 
it, the yield is I get higher concurrency and less resource content. And then uh, we talked a little bit about this, the temperature-based data placement. This is the ability to tier data throughout memory, data caches, uh, cache extensions like SSD, high-speed disk, and slower disk, all managed by ASC and rules and information lifecycle management that moves this data through these, these tiers from hot in memory to cool, slow spinning disk. And then we have non-volatile cache, and I mentioned this briefly as well. This is, uh, this is the ability to reduce cache volatility. In other words, moving you know, buffers from least recently used to, uh, all the way off to, to slow spinning disk, and rather, then moving it to slow spinning disk, you move it to a fast solid state device that gives you significantly better performance when you need to recall that data from uh, from disk. In this case, in this case, uh, solid state device. Uh, the data row cache is an in-memory row store that's focus is 100% online transaction process, right? So. There are other database providers that do in-memory. I mean, we had our own in-memory in database, IMDB. You may recall we've had it for many years. This is this is different. This is this is um, immutable, right? This this writes to a transaction log, has its own redo log, and its orientation is extreme online transaction processing. It does support multi-version concurrency control, so you can have multiple incarnations of the same record at different stages to reduce weight um, for reads to access uh, these data rows that are that are highly volatile um, and and highly uh, highly accessed right so data modifications uh, in memory are extremely fast the the multi-version concurrency pro uh, control provides this data versioning not only on the in-memory row store but you can also extend multi-version concurrency control to these tables that exist in memory that also exist on spinning disk, right? And then in order to leverage these, this in-memory row store, we created, uh, we actually have a patent on a, a structure called the Hashcash B-Tree Index. And, and the Hashcash B-Tree Index is, is, uh, is used to utilize the B-Tree. Um, it actually can call a B-Tree Index but it's designed to access the, uh, the in-memory row store. So you can use, kind of confusing, but you can use both the B-tree and the hash cache index to access in-memory row store, right? So um, indexes that are, are very, tables that are very long, would, you would get uh, better access to a hash cache B-tree as opposed to, uh, to a B-tree index where you need to have you know, the longer your table gets, the, the more likely spread out it is on the page, the bigger the index gets, the longer the, the, uh, the, take, the time it takes to get to the data. So it, we have both of these enabled for in-memory row store. So I just want to quickly go over a benchmark that, that this is a Jeff Tallman benchmark. I'm sure many of you know, know Jeff, where we uh, introduced three of these features, compiled queries, lockless buffer cache, and latch-free B-tree. And we did a benchmark with an HP DL580, 80 core box, a half a terabyte of memory. Each ASC was configured identically with 80 engines. We did the same benchmark in ASC 16 SP01 and SP02. And the benchmark suite, you know, essentially looked like a trading system because, you know, that's where most of our customers, um, big customers who really run into contention issues and have the 60,000, 30,000, these big kind of users, that's their profile. And what we saw was, was, was quite remarkable. So uh, if you look at the charts, the blue chart is ASC 16 SP2, sorry, the blue line is 16 SP02, the red line is SP01. And if you look at throughput, as we ratcheted up the number of users, the throughput went through the roof with SP02, and had a, a rather uh, shallow uh, incline with SP01. So we improved the throughput by 7.1 times, same hardware, that's just by enabling these memscale features. In terms of response time, you can see that the blue line is basically flat. And as we 
ratcheted up the number of users, ASC 16 SP01, you can see that the response time began to degrade over time. So we actually improved response time at its peak by 216 times. Same hardware, just by enabling the feature. We, we took, Jeff took this test a little further and basically um, correlated these, this feature set uh, across ASC 15.7 all the way to ASC 16 SP03. So here you can see uh, the ASC version, ASC 15.7, Service Pack 64. Um, this is kind of our baseline, and it was able to do 42,000 transactions a minute, and the CPU is essentially pegged, right? 99% utilization, and uh, we saw a lot of cash manager spin lock. When we moved that workload to ASC 16 SP01 GA, guess what? We saw the same, 42,000 transactions, CPU utilization of 99 uh, percent. When we moved that workload to ASC 16 SP02 with the latch free B tree, with uh, you know lockless uh, data cache, and with with simple native access protocol, we went to 282,000 transactions and reduced the contention to 45 percent. So now we've got some headroom left um, in our processing. We then moved it to SP03. Uh, we saw the number go to 315,000 transactions per minute with 44% utilization. So then when we introduced the data row cache and we ratcheted up the number of users, we saw that we could get to 719,000 transactions. And then when we added the hash cache B tree, 771,000 transactions. And we still, this is the same box, we still haven't pinned the processor. So that's 13,000 transactions per second. That's an 18 times incremental improvement over our baseline. That's same hardware. That kind of that drives home the point of you know what we are trying to do with with these mem scale. So, you know, now that we have this feature set, right? There are this rich suite of of features. How do you go about uh, assessing how to use them? Because you know there are. Uh, is it a database-wide change? Is it a table-wide? Do I need to recreate indexes? Do I need to alter indexes? Do I need to enable in-memory features? How big does my in-memory data row cache need to be? Et cetera, et cetera. So we have a workload profiler, and, and the workload profiler is essentially a suite of store procedures, and, and it's de a dedicated database and some master tables that will actually go off and gather usage statistics do some analysis for you and spit out configuration changes for you to make to uh, enable this the in-memory row store and the sizes uh, that you need to change the data caches to, the tables that you need to alter to set the row caching on, right? These are the tables that you want to have um, extended into the in-memory row store. It, it'll help you do that, right? It, it'll essentially do everything but run it for you. You are going to need to cut and paste the commands that and run them, but it's going to go out there and do all that heavy lifting, lifting for you. So, you know, changing changing gears here just for a minute. We'll talk a little bit about what we've done with respect to ASE and support for data center operations. And uh, you know, the the first enhancement I want to talk about is ASE always on option. And the always on option creates an HADR cluster. So for today. Uh, the HADR cluster is limited to two nodes. So that is for today, and that is uh, two nodes for either high availability or two nodes for disaster recovery. Now, having said that, you can plug the existing HADR architecture into an existing replication topology, and you can use existing replication to do a DR strategy, if you wish, uh, you know, you, this way you don't have to redo any of your existing rep deaths or subscriptions. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so HADR is log-based logical replication that comes in three flavors. It comes in a synchronous flavor, so synchronous replication, synchronous transactional replication, near synchronous, and completely asynchronous. <laughs> Pardon me. And in synchronous mode. 
it offers zero data loss, right? So re recovery point objective of zero. Uh, so this offers a very fast failover, less than two minutes typically. And if you're wanting to do a planned failover in order to do some maintenance on one of your two nodes in your HA cluster or HADR cluster, uh, that's like uh, one minute um, in order to uh, to do a failover. And it uses ASC cockpit as the GUI. So I think Sybase Control Center is kind of not part of the equation anymore. Uh, what it offers is uh, automated fault detection, uh, automated transparent client failover. So, so let me be clear about this, right? So you need to do nothing and the client will fail over. Having said that, doing nothing is not a good plan. At least if you want to impose, invoke the, 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 the client failover, you know, whether it's a JConnect or an ODBC or, uh, or you know, what have you, DBLive, CTLive kind of interface, capture the error code that's coming back and do something like resubmit the last transaction if you think it's apparent. But in, in order to have client failover, you know, out of the box, you need to do nothing. Um, the companion can be for obviously for read over read only reporting, just like with uh, with replication server in the past, um, and uh, again provide zero downtime um, upgrades. And this, by the way, supports the in memory row store, right? So that in memory row store is logged to a separate redo log, but that is part of the always on replication policy. It gets replicated. So as I said, an ASC 16 SP02 patch level five, you can plug always on into an existing replication topology. And, and the way it works, so, so CI mode or the canonical interface mode rep agent is actually embedded inside a rep server. So we've, I'll say that again, we've taken a rep agent and we've embedded it to read the queues inside the rep server. And the external, rep server that you're talking to thinks that this rep agent inside the rep server is a database, treats it like a database, right? So this allows HADR cluster to be implemented without making any changes to your existing replication topology. Couple of issues, right, with, uh, with, with the current um, external replication, the external version must match the HADR SRS version, right? So your rep server needs to understand the canonical interface protocol. That's, that's the new language uh, uh, within the replication server. So it needs to be at the same version of the rep server. Uh, MSA and stored procedure SQL DML replication is supported. Table replication is coming. So right now you would do database level and then you would use exclusions in the database rep def uh, to work around that for now. But it's coming. In terms of security, a whole lot of work has gone on with the prior releases. I, I wish we had more time, but we've done a lot of work in security. Uh, some new features within ASC 16, SP0, uh, uh, SP1, and SP2, like full database encryption, residual data removal, right? That's like when you say delete, you're actually going to write binary zeros to the space to physically delete, physically uh, remove whatever data that was there. Uh, we've gone, you know, from OpenSSL to uh, SAP's common crypto libraries, and and this is because particularly important for our civilian uh, agencies in the U.S. and Canada, we just couldn't keep up with OpenSSL. The SSL changes were happening all the time, and uh, the, the you know the the government was moving, and we had to be responsive to their requirements for SSL. With our own common crypto library, we have a lot more control, and it not an open source product and completely owned by us, so we take complete responsibility for it. Restrict owner access, right? This is the ability to restrict access to private data from database owners by setting, uh, by restricting decryption of that data. Uh, more granular auditing, so this allows us to audit, uh, put particular options for a particular login or role that we want to audit, limiting the number of audit records that we generate, right? Uh, full text auditing, full text auditing now supports full text DML, including parameters and parameter names and values. Uh, and sensitive data is, is obfuscated. Um, what else we got here? 
configuration changes, right? So SAP uh, ASC allows you to track the history of the configuration changes that you make um, to, you know, not just your, uh, to your, to your uh, the server-wide configuration parameters, but to your database options and, and to your, your, your data cache and data cache pool properties and to engine threads, all of that stuff is, is, is now audited, right? Um, re resolve is owner. So this is basically just a feature that you turn on at the database or uh, pardon me, at the, at the object level that you now no longer need to qualify, right? I don't need to say DBO dot. I don't need that DBO extension. Basically, it just assumes that that I'm the owner and resolves it as the owner, so it makes you know makes query writing a little simpler. On-demand encryption, right? So I can actually ask for a, a secure connection and and then use the crypto libraries uh, and other do things like for Open Client and JConnect and ODBC and um, to pass sensitive information uh, encrypted and and have it de-encrypted when it when it gets to to the database and, and things like random password, right? Generate a random password based on a mask that, that you uh, you tell the ASC um, to to impose things like you know digits in the password, special characters. It, it'll it'll generate a random password. For you. Some things that are coming shortly, right? Uh, the coming soon, the secure password store. So this is you know the, the ability to have on the client. Uh, a repository, a store for your credentials, and and this re re removes the requirement to have the minus, as an example, to have the minus p password extension in, in your I, I SQL and and risk passing that password information across in in clear text, which is sometimes not a very smart uh, thing to do, right? So so that's that's coming in uh, SP. Uh, PL04, and also what's coming is is the uh, hardware security device support. So this you know this will allow ASC users to keep keys in a networked hardware security device, right? So essentially, the ASC master key is encrypted with the hardware secure uh, security device key, and that from that point on, the hardware security device manages that key for you right so this introduces uh an alternative to to, to uh dual control uh, keys on on master records and eliminates the risk of single user with a password uh accessing all of your servers so let's talk a little bit about a our asc workload analyzer this this is a, a feature that was introduced in in asc 16 sp02 and it's it's a feature that enables a user to capture a production workload, analyze the production workload, replay the production workload in a variety of test environments, and then make determinations on, you know, what configuration changes, what database design changes, what software version changes, or operating system environment changes, what impact they have on your production system. So this is an ideal kind of tool to, to leverage when you want to move from, as, as an example, ASC 15.7 to ASC 16 SP03, and you want to implement some of these new features, right? You could implement the features in your test environment and get a sense for what kind of impact they're going to have. You could create new indexes. You could create all kinds of changes. You could sniff out what procedures are causing you the most anxiety, which ones are executed the, the most times, which which procedures would benefit from indexes, but essentially you get to really stress out a workload with production type constraints before you go production with your enhanced. Right, so I think I spoke about most of these prob problematic queries, uh, client activity patterns, measure the performance of captured workloads in different server configurations, evaluate your upgrades, understand the benefits of the new options, Diagnose production uh, problems by replaying functionality in a controlled environment, test new features, and run them against uh, a captured workload. And this is a very elegantly captured workload, right? So if this is this is not a network sniffer. This uh, you can run secure sockets. It has no impact on the traffic that you're capturing. The traffic is actually captured at a database socket level, 
So the captured workload understands who the user is, it understands their SPID, it understands all of their permissions because it has complete access to all of the MBA data about that user because it is an active thread in the database, right? So your production capture would consist of your production users in a production environment generating PCAP files. And you know, a PCAP file for a large system may grow to 250 gigabytes you know, for a, a full day's capture, maybe more. Um, you would then monitor that uh, from your ASC cockpit and you would manage that data in, in a workload uh, repository. When the time came to do the analysis of that data, right, you would load that workload uh, into cockpit and then you would replay it in your dev test environment looking at the user populations, looking at the procedures, looking at the index utilization, looking at what queries were taking long, you could then begin to filter user groups, filter applications, filter queries, pull it out, see what happens to your workload and what happens to your throughput as you begin to remove load or add load or add indexes or change parameters or add options and then replay that workload again. So a very uh, intuitive tool right a great segue as we move to the cloud one of the first things we're looking at doing is providing the workload analyzer in a cloud on a subscription to give you the ability to test the production workload move the pcap file up to the cloud and test it in a machine that uh, you know that's similar to yours in production with respect to ase in the cloud <clears throat> right, so we have uh, SAP bring your own license and infrastructure as a service certified on, you know, the who's who of, uh, of cloud platforms, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Azure, and IBM Bluemix. We've also recently done some certifications in China on how, uh, Huawei and uh, Alibaba. And we have a subscription service or database as a service with with Amazon AWS. So that is, you can go to Amazon AWS and purchase your ASD subscription service, as well as purchasing your ASD subscription service on the SAP Cloud Platform. All right, so in terms of, you know, just kind of a, a walkthrough, um, multiple vendors have our Enterprise Edition on Linux and Windows, multiple vendors, have our runtime edition for suite. Amazon has our public cloud edition. Docker has our developer and express and enterprise edition. Uh, SAP managed cloud services provides our enterprise edition and SAP cloud, cloud, cloud platform provides our adaptive server platform, which is a subscription and a fully managed database as a service. So you can see we really are trying to embrace the, the, uh, the cloud paradigm with, with ASD. Um, so let's talk now a little bit more about our integration with HANA. So with respect to SQL script report, as I mentioned earlier, um, ASC supports HANA SQL script procedures. It also supports HANA schema, obviously. Uh, it supports HANA SQL in ODBC and JWC applications. <coughs> and ASC has a SQL script and T-SQL par uh, parser. So they coexist, but they're mutually exclusive. So that is, you can't have SQL script and you can't have uh, T-SQL in the same database. They can be in the same server, but, but they can't be in the same database. And um, so, you know, as you look at our use cases, Use case one is, and I think I mentioned this as well, is that you can build an ASC application, um, deploy on ASC, and then deploy it on HANA. So if I choose to build the ASC application using SQL script, that application can be easily ported to run on HANA. Conversely, I can build a, an OLTP app on HANA using SQL script. And if I wish to move that app to ASD, then I can do so. And, you know, pictorially kind of looks like this. So in ASC, I've got my clients that are using uh, SQL, and I've got 
spanning the bridge between ASE and HANA, I've got clients that are writing SQL script language, and that SQL script can exist as procedures in both ASE and in HANA. I also mentioned earlier uh, we were moving component integration services and ASE closer to HANA. And the way we're doing that is with, uh, with a service that we're calling the, the HANA Accelerator for ASD. And the HANA Accelerator for ASD provides native access to HANA capabilities from ASD. So that is ASD Transact SQL queries and procedures <coughs> can be executed against a copy of the data that exists in HANA. So what happens? is Component Integration Services, GIS, is going to push that procedure or push that query into HANA for execution against a copy of that data in HANA. And that result set is returned to ASE where it's passed off to the, uh, to the client. Right? This provides significant reporting performance improvements by pushing the query into HANA. And then, when that data is in HANA, I also get to leverage many of the innovations in HANA, like graph, like a geospatial, like time series, uh, like uh, machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence, etc. Right. So, so the way this works is here is my existing ASC OLTP server. Right. So I've got my clients doing read and writes to my OLTP instance. And typically what happens traditionally in an ASE environment is I use replication server and I replicate my OLTP instance to an ASE reporting instance. And then I split my, my users. I split my users from um, read writers into ASE to, uh, to read only. I offload some of my readers to, to my ASE instance. And, and we've, we've been doing this since uh, the early 1990s. What happens with A for A is we introduce a HANA instance to the mix, and we materialize the data from our ASE instance into HANA. We then replicate from ASC into HANA, and now my readers are connecting to my read server, but rather than talking to live tables, they're talking to proxy tables. And the proxy tables are using component integration services to point to physical tables that live in HANA. And the stored procedures are using CIS to push the procedural logic into HANA for execution. So the way that looks is something like this. So here's a procedure in ASE on the left-hand side. We've got this procedure doing um, this is a, a, a stock tick query. And as it pushes it down into HANA, it serializes that query and, and executes it one statement at a time, right? First thing it does is it creates a temporary table in HANA. Second thing it does is create a second temporary table. Third thing it does is it does an insert into from a, uh, into the temporary tables via select. Does a second insert into via select and selects from my temporary tables and returns that result set and then drops the table, right? And you'll notice that those temporary tables are actually physical temporary tables in HANA. So all of those interim results stay in HANA. I can then take that transact SQL that was generated um, by CIS, and if I wish to, I can paste it into HANA and run that natively in HANA. So you can see that CIS is doing a lot of work here in um, taking Transact SQL and crafting from it a, a HANA SQL store procedure. So in terms of our roadmap, um, let's walk through what we've seen. So you know, recent innovations, we've seen some HANA integration. We've, uh, we, we now have uh, SAP HANA schema in ASD, and you've seen HANA SQL script in ASD. Uh, hopefully, you've seen uh, Extreme OLTP. Uh, you've seen the in-memory row store. You've seen hash cache, uh, hash-based indexes uh, for our in-memory row store. You've seen multi-version currency control. 
some of the innovations that we've done is we've uh, we've introduced um, uh, an IBM A for A. Uh, so let me kind of back up a second. ASC on IBM uh, P series was only available on Big Indian. Uh, now ASC and HANA are both available on Little Indian to support A for A. Um, you've seen uh, XOLTP and ASC adoption, the in-memory row store, the mem scale enhancements. You've seen uh, the information lifecycle management for, for uh, cache warming and scanning rows. Um, where we're going is greater than four terabytes of memory support, and um, you'll see uh, SAP Business Suite support for CDS and secure sockets. And where we're going with our product direction in 2019 is more work to be done with XOLTP and SAP uh, ASE adoption around uh, TCO improvements. We want to get beyond 32,000 connections. Um, for our custom application. And in terms of feature upgrades, what you'll see is some always on enhancements. You've seen some always on enhancements. So I mentioned um, going to uh, a third node that uh, you'll see that as being planned for, uh, for business suite this year. Um, you've seen uh, uh, crypt, the crypto language uh, for SSL, you've seen idle timeout, granular auditing, on-demand network encryption. We talked about ASD back. Actually, we didn't talk about ASD backup uh, to the cloud for AWS, but uh, that exists. You can now use uh, AWS to, to backup into the Amazon cloud with backup server. You can actually also use replication. I'm not sure it's certified, but it's coming, uh, and you can also use replication server to rep into the Amazon cloud. Uh, you've seen uh, Google Cloud uh, ASC certification, and you've seen uh, the ability to get ASC subscription services from uh, AWS. Um, what's planned is some always on enhancements um, with the application redirection list, some security enhancements, some backup server with secure socket, Support some secure pass. Uh, the, you, we talked about the secure password store. We talked about the secure key store, uh, the H HSM uh, secure key store. Um, we have some enhancements coming to um, business suite for ASC monitoring. Uh, the third node will be uh, available for always on. So you'll have HA and DR support for always on with uh, with respect to business suite some enhancements to shrink database, uh, some cloud enablement enhancements around Google Cloud certification. You saw that we support Huawei, Google, and Alibaba. Always on within the cloud is coming. Always on monitoring for cloud and AWS subscription services. And planned uh, product direction, XA support for always on, role-based resource limits, log analyzer feature coming. Uh, in 2019, uh, SAP Business Suite, uh, TMC, ASE administration. Um, we talked about focus run for ASAP solution manager. Um, and I guess, as you know, some of this is subject to change um, and what's coming. Uh, ASC 16 SP02 was December uh, eight of 18. Uh, SP03, PL04 was in May, June. AC 16 SP03, PL5 will be August, September. AC 16 SP03, PL06 will be December of 18. AC 16 SP03, PL07 will be Q2, Q3 of 19. And PL07, <laughs> maybe AC 17. Not sure on that one. But summary, here's what I want you to take away from today's session. We are, SAP is completely committed to ASC and to our ASC customers. ASC 16 and the 16 versions to come are the most significant ASC releases in the last 10 years. ASC 16 is positioned globally inside SAP as SAP's high-end extreme OLTP database. 
And if you wish to get under the covers with any of the products that you've seen, any of the features, we do have deep dives around MemScale, around Always On, around Workload Analyzer, and around the Accelerator for ASE. And you know, call Peter. I'll be happy to work with you on any of those. And thank you. That's, that's it for me, Peter. Uh, Tony, that was, that was uh, excellent. Thank you very much, Tony. Um, we are a little bit out of time, but I still want to uh, uh, just just as a disclaimer. I got I got really hammered with questions. I don't even know where to start. Uh, there were some <laughs> questions about seventeen. You just answered it at the end. Um, what we will do is essentially we will collect all these questions and and essentially put out a a summary uh, email to everybody uh, maybe we post it somewhere on a website so it's easier to consume um and we we push them out there were some iq questions i do know that in an early invite we mentioned something about iq but as you can see there was so much information by ase we just couldn't fit it in uh, in that however there will be a separate uh, iq webinar there's a lot of interest in that that we will hold uh, uh, the next uh, month or so with courtney claus and the product manager of uh, of iq uh, and please send all your questions emails go to website uh, it's, it's on the screen right now uh, tony one question that that came in there is uh, obviously all the cool stuff that you mentioned about the uh, mem scale and the workload mm -hmm. analyzer and uh, and the other uh, is this part of the license or do 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 we have to pay more for that so some is uh, so so the easy answer is it's a, it's an option that's the, that's the easy answer that that you, mem, some so mem scale you you need to uh, you need to purchase. okay but uh, but here's the thing right you can get that eval version and and you can mem scale Unless you're pegged, you know, if if you're pushing your CPUs and and you're pushing them to to be really busy, you know, mem scale, you might not get you might not get what you think you're going to get on a mem scale. Um, mem scale is designed for the customer that really wants to push their machines to the maximum. Um, like you saw that bench line we used, the, the, the processor was 99% busy before we began invoking those mem scale features. And that's where we get, began to shake out some more headroom on that box, right? But, but yeah, the, the heart, I'm, you know, I'm sorry to say, I'm not sorry to say, I'm happy to say mem scale <laughs> is a feature that you, <laughs> you, you need to pay for, um, as is always on, right? As is workload analyst. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, yes. The presentation, there will be a PDF that we will make available uh, as soon as yep. possible. Uh, we will let you know. I have all of your contact information. There will be an email going out. The session is recorded. That will be available uh, online as well. Uh, you will get some follow-up information. Please take advantage. I think there is a small uh, uh, poll at the end, a survey uh, asking, how do we do? Uh, and uh, I think that's it for today. We run a little bit over, uh, but uh, I think it was worthwhile. Tony, as always, a pleasure. Thank you very much for all the information. Uh, and, thank, very well. and thank everybody for attending. Uh, we'll see you next time. Please stay tuned. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you.